Well, hello and welcome to the Church of Visalia online campus. My name is Jordan, and I just want to thank you for joining us this evening. We've got a great message planned for you, so if tonight at all you have any questions or comments during the message, feel free to join our live chat at the right side of the screen. Our online hosts would love to assist you in any way they can. Well, here's Pastor Kevin with tonight's message. Enjoy. Today, I want to talk to you about three different stories. I want to, I'm going to tell three different stories. I like story. I like narratives and things like that. And so today, I'm going to tell you three different stories. And then after we talk about three stories, we, we'll kind of point out uh, some points about them that maybe we can learn from that will kick us into this next year. The first story that we want to discuss is about a young man um, who wanted to... Um, have some expansion in his life. He, he, he wanted to move from one area of a city to another area of a city. And I don't, I don't know for sure if he'd been, you know, like renting a place or living with mom and dad. I don't know the, the background of that part. But I do know that he was in a situation in his life where he wanted to have a home built. He wanted to build a house. And so he started to, as we all do, if you want to have a house built, you, you start to look for what? The first thing is you start to look for a, a, a piece of property. So he starts to search for a piece of property, and he finds a, a few pieces of property that he likes, and he starts to narrow them down. This one's in, it's in the city, and I would rather live out in the country, or, 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 or this one here, it's, it's up on a hill, and I would kind of rather live in a little bit of a valley area, kind of flat. And so he starts to find some areas that he likes, and he... He, he, he narrows it down, he narrows it down to, to, two, to two pieces of property. So as he begins to look at the property, he, he knows he has to build a foundation and then build the house. And so he has all of the, the soil testings done on the property that need to, ha- need to happen because it had never had a house built on it before. And as the men go out and they begin to check the soil of this particular piece of property, uh, they find out that... Um, this one particular piece of property that he had, he had narrowed it down to two, and this one particular piece of property that he wanted, he, they found that, man, it was, it was plush, and it was in a great area, and it looked so good, but the soil was just a little bit more unstable than this other piece of property. As they went and they checked out the two pieces of property, the one, the, the, the one piece was in a great area, but the soil was a little unstable, but this other one was it was in a nice area as well, but the the soil was much more solid. In fact, it had it was it was there was a, a giant rock that was there. It was part of the earth. And man, it would have been a, it's a great place to build a house. And so this guy begins to choose which one that was he want. He, he looks through the pros and the cons of this one and he looks through the pros and the cons of this one. And, but it basically it, it comes down to. Where is going to be the most stable place? I want to build a beautiful house and the whole thing freaking fall down. I, mean, I, don't, want to, I don't want to do that. So he picks, he picks, of course, the one with the more stable, sturdy soil and foundation area for himself. And so he builds his house on this area here, on this piece of property. And it, 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 just, it just so happens that there was another person looking for some real estate as well, and, and they decided to build their house on the other piece of property that was a little more unstable. And as it happens, uh, pretty much every place except for here in the valley, uh, there was a giant rainstorm. And a rainstorm happened, and it started to blow, and it started to sleet, and it started to hail, and it started to really whip up a crazy storm. And the houses were both built, and the house on the, 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 the softer soil the foundation wasn't able to handle the giant storm that came, and it, it fell. But the man who was looking for the piece of property, and he decided to build his house on the more solid terrain and the, the rock, his house, his house stood. There was something solid about it. So that's story number one. Story number two is about a guy who had a lot of business sense. And he was one of those guys, you ever know somebody who as soon as you meet them, maybe even as a youngster, you're like, man, that person, that person knows how to make money. You ever met somebody like that where they're just, 
they're just from a kid. I mean, they start selling lemonade, and actually people are coming. And then they start doing this, and then they start doing that. Some people just have business sense. Some people have no business being in business, but other people have have business sense. And this was a gentleman that as a young man, he began to understand, I really love serving other people and also getting returns and finances because of my service. And he figured out, he started out doing one or maybe two, three different things. But after a short time of trying to figure out what his niche was, he found out what his business niche was. And his business niche was farming. He was an incredible farmer. And he knew how to not only run the business side of the farm, but also when to plant, when not to plant, what to do, who to partner with, what equipment to use. And so he started off with one one small little farm. But because he was so gifted at what he was doing, he, his, his farm harvested a lot of crops very, very quickly, which then, because he knew how to save money and do business things, he began to turn those, that harvest into a profit, which then didn't turn into just another car or another house or another whatever. He flipped that money back into the business, and he expanded his farm. And then he flipped that money back into the business and he expanded his farm. And soon he had not just a field or fields, he had fields upon fields upon fields upon fields that he was farming. So much so, throughout the course of several years of his life, he had built all of these barns and silos, and he had trucks coming in and out and companies that that ran the trucks. And man, this guy had the hookup. And one night at the end of the day, he goes out and he's looking over his property. He's looking over the the money. He's looking over all of the books and he's drinking a cup of coffee and he's just realizing to himself, man, whoo, I've made it. I've arrived. I'm kind of bored. What could I do? What should I do? I've got all of this money. I've got all of this wealth. I've got all of these possessions. What should I do with everything I have? And then he gets one word in his mind. More. Whoo, I just, what if I could make more? And he says to himself, this is what I will do. I'm so good at what I do. I'm going to just, I'm going to tear down those barns and I'm going to sell that field and I'm going to do this. I'm going to get rid of everything that I have so that I can start this whole thing over and reinvest everything again and build more barns and have more fields and I can expand the company even more. But it was a crazy, he got the whole thing planned out in his mind. He put it down and it's on his paperwork. But it's the craziest thing. That very night, the gentleman died. And before he could get to have more, he lost everything he had, and what he had simply got turned over to someone else. His children or his assistant, they took over the company. That's story number two. It's a sad one. Welcome to church. Glad you're here today. Number three is, the third story is this. This is about a guy, some people are, their their thing in life is, um, is business. Their thing in life is, is, is sports. Their thing in life is whatever. But th- this is a gentleman who his thing in life was, I, I just got to come out and say it. I'm going to keep it PG-13 up in here. But this guy, this guy's thing was women. I mean, he just, he liked the, not just, he just didn't like the lady. He liked the ladies. I mean, this guy, he was a woman's man. But it was a crazy thing about him. Not only was he a woman's man, this guy, he also was very spiritual in his life. He was very cognizant of there is a God and he is good and I want to serve him. But he also, he had this passion of, of women. Now, his passion in life didn't fall too far from the tree because his, his father was very passionate about women as well. And so that, that DNA and those desires kind of fell down into him and his heart. And so it was an odd dichotomy with this guy because he did love God with all of his heart, but he also loved the ladies. So as he's pursuing God in his life, he begins to become very successful. In fact, he becomes the leader of his, of his nation. 
And as he's leading his nation, he gets married. And this is old school back in the day. It's not a president and a, and a first lady. He was a king. And so he has a king. He marries his queen. But because he's so passionate in his life, he marries another lady and then another lady and then another lady. And then another lady. This is like totally illegal in the United States, except for maybe parts of Utah. So I'm just teasing. It's a joke. It's 9 a.m. Wake up a little bit. So is he just keeps marrying these women. And as he begins to marry these women, he also begins to get, which was legal in his day, he began to get some little concubines on the side. Not just a few. He had hundreds of them. But they were not from his country. They were not from his way of thinking. They were not from his, his spiritual line about who God is and what God wants. And so what began to happen was, is this very successful, very smart, very passionate for God leader. He began to, his mind began to, began to get off kilter of God and off center of God. And it began, his mind and his heart began to be turned and swayed, not just to the one true God. It began to be turned and swayed to many other gods. Because what was happening was, is the ladies of his life, the, the love of his loves of his life, they kept telling him and whispering in his ear about their God and about their way and about their history. And soon this very strong leader who knew who he was in God but had this flaw of passions in his life, his heart began to turn away from God. And he wanted God in his heart, but his heart began to turn to the passions of his wives. And his life, the only way I could describe it is his life got off, off kilter. And it was wobbly and it was unstable. And he... He continued on in his life to be very successful in some ways, but also to be very, very uneasy in his heart. In fact, he began to wonder if there even is a God and what is everything even worth. And his life from the inside out began to rot. It's a very crazy story. In fact, all three of these are. These three stories today that are, are loosely related to Matthew Chapter 7, the story of the man who built his house upon the rock. Of Luke chapter 12, the rich man who had many possessions and barns, and he decided to, to tear down his barns. And the Lord said, you fool, because tonight you'll die. And the third story about King Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 11. These, these three stories that I just told you, I would encourage you to go back and read the actual stories because they're way better than what I've said. These, these three stories today, they, they represent, I believe they represent three types of people that are, that are here in the room today or, or watching on the online campus. Is every single person in this room, every single one of us, we fall into one of these three stories of our life. The first one is, is this, is God in the center. This, this first guy, this, 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 this guy who's looking for property, he, man, he had God at the center of his life, and it was God that he, he built his house on. It was the, the truths, it was the truths of, of, of Jesus that he built his house on. There's, there's people in the room today or watching that, that have God at the center of their life. Then there's other people in the room today who are very well-intentioned and very sharp at what you do. However, you have something other than God at the center of your life, like, like the businessman. His, the center of his life, the strength of his life, the, the foundation of his life was not God. It was his business and his business acumen and his ability to gain more. More was the strength of his life. And then... So there's people in the room today that have God at the center. There's people in the room today who have something at the center of their life, but it's not God. It's something they possess or something that they do. And then thirdly, there, there, there's people in the room today that you've got God in your life, but like King Solomon, you have a belief of God, but it's the passions of your life. And for some, it might be lust. For some, it might be money. For some, it might be your hobby. For some, it might be your boat. For some, it might be your grandchild. Hello, i got to preach to myself here. might be your grandchild. Is What happens is, is God's in your life, but God's not in the center. 
And there's been other things that have swayed you and pushed you, oh, pushed God over to the side because something else has your ear, something else has your heart. And you love God, but your life you find is wobbly and it's unstable because God's not in the center. There's three types of people in the room today. God at the center, something else than God at the center, and then people who are just out of balance, out of balance in your life. So today what we want to do is, just for the next few minutes, is we just want to kind of look at these three stories, as we told, and now we want to turn a corner, and we want to look at what they kind of represent and, and, and what we can learn from them. First of all, God at the center of life. Now, obviously, you guys know where I'm going in this message. This is, this is the win, okay? I'm going to just let the cat out the bag before we get going. The, the goal today is to get you to say to yourself, either I want to keep God in the center of my life or ding, 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 I need to move God to the center of my life. That's where we're going today. So, but the first is God at the center. Now, 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 here's the thing about this. Let's look at what this actually is. What, does it, what is it to have God at the center of your life? What does it look like? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Let's, let's take this for a second and just kind of sit on it, and, 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 and what does this mean? The Bible says, put your trust. Trust in the Lord. That's your faith. It's, it's, like, it's like your weight. You're, you're leaning in on your, your hopes and your strengths. It's, Put your trust, put your faith and your weight in on the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Put your faith and weight in on the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean on, don't trust in, don't put your faith in the things that you understand. But in all of your ways, in your marriage, in your job, in your finances, in your hobby, in your children, in your grandchildren, in every way, in all of your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. You are real. You are stronger than me. And when we do that, when we acknowledge God and we put our weight and our faith in every area of our life in God, not in ourselves, the Bible says that God then will direct your path. This is what it says. Put your weight and faith in God, not in your own understanding. And when we do this, God will stabilize us and he will walk us through the path excuse me, pass of our life. That's what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is teaching. In Proverbs 16, 3, I love this passage. It says this, it says, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Whew, I could preach on this all day, so I'll just, I gotta calm down a little bit. It's, it's, scripture says in Proverbs 16, 3, it says, commit to the Lord in whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. The reason I like this verse so much is because when we break it down, what it actually means. The word commit says, the word commit means to bind as a pledge. It's like, it's like I've made a, com um, a commitment. I've, I've made an oath. I am, I am tied to this. Like I've tethered myself. If I, if I tie myself to this whiteboard or if I tie myself to a bench or I tie myself to something, I can't leave that thing. I'm, I'm tied to it. I'm, I'm tethered to it. That's what commit means. It says, commit to the Lord in whatever you do. So that means to bind yourself to God in everything you do. You are tied back to God. And th then he will establish your plans. The word establish means to bring into a stable basis, to bring stability. Now, if you're here today and you're an entrepreneur or you're a business person or whatever, is you know that when you go out and you start a business, you, to a, your business is not yet established. You've got, the, you know, you've got the paperwork, and you might have a team member, but it's not stable. And you want to establish that business. So it's established whenever it's stable, and it's, it's self-perpetuating. It's, it's not going anywhere. It's going to be here. You've made it two, three, four years now, and you're solid. That's what established means. When you first get married, your marriage isn't established. You've got to get a solid base in it where you know I ain't leaving her and she ain't leaving me. We're, we're tied together. We're established. There's a foundation here. And Proverbs says to bind yourself to the Lord in everything you do. And when you do, he will stabilize your plans. 
That when we tie ourselves to God, it is God that stabilizes our finances. It is God that stabilizes our marriage. It is God that stabilizes our hopes and our dreams. It is God that brings stability to our life. But we have to commit ourselves, tie ourselves back to God. The third verse in, in keeping God in the center is, is Matthew 6.33. And if you've become a church at any length of time, you've heard this before. It says, therefore, don't be anxious for anything, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, for this is what the Gentiles do. For your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. Every single one of these passages of Scripture is talking about the same type of thing. Put God in the center. Tie yourself to God. Put God first. Make God number one. All of these passages are saying the same type of thing. And if you've been coming to church a while, you, you or thought about it much in your life, we all know, those of us that believe in God, and especially those of us that are accepting him, that God doesn't want to be number two in our life. He's, he's number one or he's nothing. We, we, we're either tied to him or we're not. He's either in us or he's not. And Matthew, Jesus' words in Matthew say to put God first. Seek first the kingdom of God. And when we do, all of the other things will be established. Proverbs says, tie yourself to God. And when you do, all the other things of your life will be established. This is over and over and over in the scripture. Put God first. Put God first. Put God first. But let's talk about just for a second, what does it... What does it mean to put God first? What does it actually, what does it look like? Have you ever thought about that before? I don't know if you have or not. I'm, I'm very image oriented. I like to draw and I like to, to see things. And when I see something, I learn better. And so I've thought about this a lot. What does it mean to put God first? This is, this is typically what people kind of teach on as it comes to putting God first. It's basically is everything's like has its own box. So there's the God box. And, of course, the God box has got to be first. And then if you're married, well, <laughs> amen, praise the Lord. Your, your spouse is going to be, you know, right there, number two. And then if you've got children, then they're going to be number three. And then, you know, you've got to pay for the kids and your spouse and all those types of things. So then you're going to be it's kind of leaning a little bit. It's supposed to be straight. And then, if you, then you're going to have your job. And then lastly is, is maybe your hobbies or, you know, the things that you're into. And when it comes to our life, many times this is what we, this is, put God first. Okay, well, God's first, and then my spouse is second, my kids are third, my job is fourth, and my, my hobbies are, are fifth. And, but God's got to be number one on the totem pole of my life, because if he's not, I'm going to get all jacked up. But here's the thing, though. What I've seen in my life, anyway, my very short life, because I'm so young, I'm only 46, but is, why are you laughing? Don't laugh at that. <laughs> is what I've seen in my life is this, is I get in trouble and people get in trouble when we compartmentalize our life. When we go through our life and we say, okay, now right now I'm, I'm a Christ, this is Christian Kevin. This is Christian Kevin on Sunday and Christian Kevin when I'm serving and Christian Kevin when I'm giving to God. This is, this is Christian Kevin and now, now this is my, now, now I'm married Kevin and now I'm dad Kevin and now I'm on the job and now I'm, I'm, I'm playing golf. And I get in trouble in my life, and I know you get in trouble in your life. Everybody gets in trouble in your life whenever we compartmentalize our life. Okay, th this is whenever I'm a Christian. This is whenever I'm a father. This is whenever I'm at the hobbies. This is whenever I'm doing my thing. And I'm not going to worry about this over here right now because I'm doing this. We get all jacked up when we try and do that. And the reason is, is because we can't. You can't live your life God here, spouse here, and now I'm a Christian, and now I'm a dad, and now I'm this. Because here's what I've seen in my life, and it's the same in yours. We are all of these things at the exact same time. Right now, while I'm talking to you, I'm doing my job as a, as a pastor of a church. I'm doing it because of my passion for Jesus. While I'm passionately serving Jesus and working on the job, I'm still married to my wife, Veronica. I still have four children at this time. I still have hobbies that I, I like to write and I, um, uh, um, things that I like to do. I have, I have hobbies all at the same time. 
And where we get in trouble is, is when we try and put things in compartments and pull things out in drawers. That's not how life is. You are all of these things at the exact same time. So what it means to put God first and what it looks like to put God first is not the totem pole. It's not the God totem pole. It's more of to put God first is more of it's a wheel. To put God first in our life, it's not a a totem pole or a column in any way, shape, or form. It's a wheel. And what our life is, it's like a wagon wheel. And a wagon wheel has the outer shell that that rolls on the ground, correct? A wagon wheel has a center hub that all of the different spokes go to. And all of the spokes that are attached to the outer shell are also, they are tied to, they are tethered to, they are connected to the center hub. And as the wheel rolls down the road, eventually, boom, boom, it hits a bump. But when it hits a bump, the outside, what is, what is seen, this, the, the, the bump, the pressure of the bump hits the spoke. It goes up the spoke, but because the spoke is tied and tethered and connected to the hub, the wheel, it endures the pressure and just keeps on rolling down the road. And this is what it is like in our life. Your life is not a totem pole. Your life this year, this, it, it, it's a wagon wheel. And you have something at the center of your life. This is the outer shell that everybody sees. Hey, brother, how you doing? Too blessed to be stressed. How's it going today? Going great. Amen. This is the outer shell that everybody sees. How are you? I'm fine. How you doing? I'm doing good. And it's, it's what we want everybody to see. It's our Facebook profile. It's our Instagram profile. This is what everybody sees. And then we've got the wheel, the, 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 we have these spokes of our life. And the spokes of our life are our, our spouse, if you're married or significant other. Your, your spokes are your job or, or, or your money. It's your kids and it's your hobbies. These are the, the spokes of our life. And the spokes of our life have to be tied to something because any time in our life we're going to hit a bump. Your marriage is going to hit a bump. Your relationship with your kids is going to hit a bump. Your relationship with your job is going to hit a bump. And when it hits the bump, when your marriage hits a bump, people are going to notice it. You're going to see it, and the stress is going to go up through the spoke of your marriage. That's why it's so important to ask yourself the question, what's my center hub? What is the thing that the stress of my marriage is tied to? What is the thing that the stress of raising kids that made me go bald way too early? What what is it tied to? What is my money tied to? Because if you don't have the right thing in the center, what will happen is, is you hit a bump in your marriage. It'll go through here. And if this isn't strong enough to sustain it, your marriage is going to fall out of your life. If your center hub isn't strong enough to sustain it, your job's going to fall out of the wheel of your life. Your hobbies are going to stop existing if you don't have the right center hub. And that's why Jesus says in Matthew, the writer in Solomon in Proverbs says, they all say to put God, seek you first the kingdom of God in your marriage, with your kids, with your hobbies, with your job, and then all of these things will be added unto you. Commit yourself to the Lord. Tie yourself to God. And then he will establish. He will strengthen your kids. He will strengthen your hobbies. He will strengthen your finances. He will strengthen your marriage. Tie yourself to God. Commit yourself to God. And he will establish all of the plans of your life. This is what it looks like to have God at the center. It's not a totem pole. It's a wagon wheel. But there's three different types of people in the room. Some, this is you. God is at the center of your life. And if you notice, if God's at the center of your life, it's not like you don't hit bumps. You're going to hit bumps. It's just that when you hit a bump, God's strong enough to keep you you rolling. But where we get in uh, problems in our life is, is we take, like the second man who had his money and more, for you it might be something else, but we put something else in the middle. And we put God as a spoke. 
And for the rich, for the rich businessman that we were talking about, this is a guy who he had money at the center of his life. More was the center of his life. Money and money and money. And when his life hit a bump, he lost all of his money and it just went to somebody else. When we have something else other than God, well, here's, here's the problem. If you have your job and your job security at the center of your life, when all of a sudden you hit a bump, okay, you, 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 you hit a bump and you get some, some bad health and your kids are sick, well, now all of a sudden you got to start missing work. And because you're missing work, then you, you got some stress. And you, because there's sickness, there's some, there's some stress in the marriage. And you're making trips to the hospital and trips to the doctor, and there's stress now in your marriage. And now all of a sudden, because there's stress in your marriage, you're showing up late for work, things aren't going well, and your boss, you're, you're not making as much money as you used to, you're not doing as good as what you used to, and that pressure is now on your finances, and the boss meets with you and says, hey, bro, we got to make a change. And now you've lost your job, you've lost your income. Where's your strength? There is none. And then all of a sudden, now your marriage is really affected. Now you can't take care of your kids. You can't afford to do the hobbies no more. And your life starts to fall apart because you had the wrong thing in the center hub. This was the problem with the second guy. There's three types of people. Some have God in the center. Some have something other than God in the center. And then there are those like King Solomon that we talked about. King Solomon had God somewhat in his life, especially at first. But what happened with King Solomon was is he spent an inordinate amount of time, talent, and treasure, and heart and, and, and heart of value with his spouses and with his lust, that God was in his life, but it pushed God all the way to the side. And now he's not spending much time with his kids. Now his hobbies are, are kind of off a little bit. His money started to get affected, especially at the end of his life. And now Solomon is rolling through life, but he's rolling through life. What? What would a wagon wheel roll like if that was how it was put together? Foom, boom, foom, boom, foom, boom, foom, boom. Like that, I've been practicing it. Foom, boom, foom, boom. And that's what happens. And that's how, that's how Solomon's life sounded. Foom, boom, foom, boom, foom, boom. And at the end of it, it all fell apart. Because a wagon wheel that has a spoke, but the spoke's not in center, eventually it's not going to be able to handle the pressure and everything's going to fall apart. And isn't that how some of our lives were in 2016? It's not that God wasn't in there. I mean, God's in there. But I'm just, I'm just out of balance. And I'm spending way too much time at the job. I'm spending way too much time with my hobbies. This is the time to elbow your husband, wives. Way too much time on the golf course. Way too much time on the gym. And my life's out of balance. Work, 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 work. And my life's out of balance. And yes, I'm still married. And yes, I still got the job. And yes, I still do my hobbies. And yes, I'm, I'm still alive. But my life looks like boom, 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 boom. And I'm not saying you won't go to heaven if this is you. But I'm saying you'll feel like hell all the way there. That was a good tweet right there. <laughs> you might go to heaven. You might go to heaven. You might go to heaven if you're out of balance in your walk with God. You might. But your life will sure feel like hell all the way there. It is so, so important for us to figure out who it is that we are. Because there are three types of people in the room today. First person, there are those that have God at the center of your life. There are others in the room, you have something else other than God at the center of your life. And then there are others in the room you, you've got a belief in God, but he's definitely not the center, and you're way out of balance. There's only one way to really, truly live. I'm not talking about being alive. I'm talking about living. There's only one true way to live. And what were the words of Jesus? Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. 
I am the life. I am the life. It is this right here, God at the center, Jesus as the hub, that's going to help you actually live this year in 2017. Not just, not just get by, not just exist, but to live. Some people are this in the room. Some have something other than God in the room, in their heart, and then others, you're off balance. Let me ask you the question today. You know, don't, don't answer out loud, just in your heart. If you, if you were put in a corner and you had to say, A, B, or C. A, God in the center. B, something else is in the center of my life. It just is. Or C, man, I'm way out of balance. Don't say it out loud. But if you're put in a corner, which one would you have to say? A, B, or C. Because the win, the only way to true life is when God is at the center. So how do we do that? How do we have a life that is stable, that is strong, that God is at the center, we're able to withstand the storms of life, we're, with, we're able to withstand the bumps of life? How do we actually get God in the center? What does this look like? That's what we're going to start talking about next week. Next week, we're going to start a brand new teaching series that it's so important. We're going to take 10 weeks. It's a 10-week teaching series, and it's called Foundations foundations and we want to help you build a better you because some of you through your relationship with God you you've built a life but it looks like this that's not who you're supposed to be some of you because of your lack of a relationship with God you you've built a life like this that's not who you're supposed to be we want to help you build a better you a you that has God at the center so today here's what we want to do Next week, we're going to start a brand new series. We're going to talk about having, having authentic faith. We're going to talk about having godly family. We're going to talk about having wisdom and finances. We're going to talk about um, having uh, um, uh, um, authentic and friendly friendships, real friendships. We're going to talk about these things over the next of the next 10 weeks. But where I want to leave you today is, is I want to leave you with a challenge. Is I don't want you to just leave today and say, boy, Pastor Kevin was on his game today. Or, man, he's done a better message than that before. I don't, I, don't, I don't want you to leave trying to think about, was that a good message, was it a bad message? I don't want you to leave with any other thought other than this. Is God at the center of my life? Is something else at the center of my life? Or am I off balance? And if God's at the center, man, you need to keep on coming these next 10 weeks because we're, we're just going to help hone and sharpen you. If God's not at the center, you need to be here. Because we're going to hit some really, really strong issues of our life that are going to help bring stability to you. God in the center, something else at the center, or are you off balance? You got to wrestle with that. This week, wrestle with it. Come back next week and get ready to stand strong. Because some of you, man, you need to stand strong this year because you've got a lot of people that, are, that, that you are helping to hold up. Others of you this year, you need to stand strong because you've got a lot of storms that are going to come that you don't even know about. But everybody in the room needs to have a strong foundation. And that's what we want to do next week is help you build a better you. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name for your goodness and grace today. Lord, we thank you that you are a good, you are not just God, you are a good God that loves us, that cares for us, that has our best interest in mind. And that's why over and over in the scriptures you said, seek first the kingdom of God. You said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You said, commit and bind yourself to God. You, you tell us over and over in the scriptures to trust you and to lean in on you and to tie ourselves to you. So God, we ask in Jesus' name that you would help us to be just for this week alone, to be honest with ourselves and say, have I done that? Is God at the center of my life? Is God the one I'm leaning on? Or is it my own strength and my money and my kids? Do I have something else in my life that is the strength and the wisdom of what I do? God, is there is something else? Is something else there at the center? Or do I have God in my life, but man, I'm so out of balance. I'm so out of balance with my kids. I'm out of balance with my job. I'm out of balance in my heart. I know that you're in there somewhere, but man... My life is just wobbling along. God, help us this week to just wrestle with where we are. Be honest with it. And then, Lord, come back next week with this idea of I'm ready. 
I'm ready to build a brand new me this year. A me that will withstand the storms of this life. A me that will support my family, support my children, be the support that my place of employment needs. Lord, I pray that you would help us this, this year, starting this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us tonight at the Church at Visalia online campus. If you'd like to give to the mission and vision of the Church at Visalia, click the Give button at the top of the screen. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight. Have a great week.